Well, it's finally that time, folks. The most anticipated movie of the year, Deadpool and Wolverine, has finally opened in theaters to great hype and anticipation, and promises to not only bring us two characters that are universally loved, played by actors that everyone seems to like, but also get people excited about coming back to the movies, and save a dying superhero genre from the certain death that it's been facing for the past few years. So, will Deadpool and Wolverine manage to live up to these promises, or will it be more like this? Hold on! Hold on! That's what we're going to talk about today. Do you like movies with a lot of violence? I do, I do, I do, I do, ooh. Well, then I've got a movie made just for you. Grab some popcorn and make sure the kids are in bed, folks, as we take a spoiler-free look at Deadpool and Wolverine. Who loves on so? So, Deadpool and Wolverine starts like any great movie, in New York, a city famous for its pizza, Broadway shows, and where Rick Moranis was randomly punched in the face. Did you see Rick Moranis got sucker punched on the Upper West Side? <laughs> New York is back, baby! And it's here where we find Wade Wilson, also known as Deadpool, celebrating his 47th birthday. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> As one does when celebrating birthdays, Wade finds himself surrounded by all of his friends and loved ones from the previous two Deadpool movies, like his girlfriend Vanessa, Colossus, and even Shatterstar. However, I can't help but feel like someone is missing from the group, but I can't quite figure out who. Oh well, I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, as birthday parties go, everything seems to be going pretty well. That is, until there's an unexpected knock at the door. It's the TVA, which can only mean one thing. This is going to be a multiverse movie. No! God, please, no! No! After being kidnapped by the TVA, Wade is introduced to Paradox, who has a once-in-a-lifetime offer for Wade. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. An offer that comes complete with fame, a new sense of purpose, and a nice new crime fighting suit. <laughs> However, it turns out the only reason they're making this offer is because Wade's timeline is being erased, and they think he has more potential in the MCU than he does here. I am. Why is this happening? Well, it turns out that Logan is what's known as an anchor being, the one person to whom an entire timeline rests. And since he died at the end of the movie Logan, the timeline is dying as well, which in turn will cause everyone that Wade loves to be erased from existence. Naturally, this doesn't sit too well with Wade, so after a bloody fight that kills a lot of TVA agents, he's able to find a Wolverine from another timeline to replace the one that died. However, this Wolverine isn't the one we're used to. He suffers from a lot of emotional distress, can't hold his liquor, and has performance issues. It's quite common in Wolverines over 40. Irritated with Deadpool's antics, the TVA rescind their offer and instead send him and Wolverine to the Void, a purgatory-like hellscape where the remnants of old timelines go to die, which causes Wolverine to be a tad bit irritated. Don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. Nope. I'm actually okay. Eventually, however, they both realize that the only way for them to escape the void is in a Honda Odyssey. The all-new Honda Odyssey. So, after much debate and a few disagreements, they decide to work together so they can get back to Wade's timeline and save it from extinction. And as the bodies pile up and the threat of the timeline being erased gets larger, the movie is very entertaining. Stars two actors who have a very natural chemistry and in the tradition of Deadpool movies from the past is incredibly violent, full of crude jokes and swearing. However, from a story standpoint, it's pretty weak with an uninteresting and pointless antagonist and a plot that falls apart as soon as you take a moment to think about it. So first, let me just say that Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds are a perfect combination. 
As I'm sure many of you know, they're friends in real life, and that friendship and natural chemistry leaps off the screen. Both of them embody these characters very well, and much like Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, it's hard to imagine anyone else could even play the characters. And to that point, let me just say that Hugh Jackman is acting his balls off. I mean, he truly has some emotional moments in this movie that a lesser actor couldn't pull off, some of which really kind of caught me by surprise. And that's not to say that I ever thought he was a bad actor, because that's not the case. It's just that he's been doing his Broadway stuff for so long that I haven't seen him in a movie for quite a while. It was a real treat to see him back in the saddle of a character that he embodies so well. Honestly, I really can't say enough good things about these guys in this film, and both of them do a lot to make up for the shortcomings in this movie. Which brings me to my next point. Story-wise, it's pretty weak. The movie takes a long time to get going, and even after it finally gets into a rhythm, there are times where the plot comes to a complete halt, just so that they can include some cameos from random people, some of which are fun, but are ultimately unnecessary. Which in turn makes the runtime of the movie, which is actually two hours, feel like it's much longer. The antagonist of the movie is also pretty uninteresting, but worst of all is that the inciting incident, the whole reason that this story is happening, begins to fall apart the moment you begin to think about it. And if you've seen all of the previous Wolverine movies, it won't be too difficult to see why. And finally, the big question on everyone's mind is, will this save the MCU? And the answer to that is, no, it won't. But after seeing the movie, I'm not convinced that that was its goal. From the start, it's pretty obvious that this was meant to be a self-contained adventure with no connection to the MCU. But what it is, is a fond farewell. A chance to see these characters on screen one more time, rather than something that sets them up for more adventures. In fact, this movie is essentially a farewell to the X-Men, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, and other Marvel movies that were made in the early 2000s. Movies that crawled so that the MCU could run. And honestly, it's kinda nice to see the acknowledgement that the current MCU stands on the shoulders of these movies, and that they laid the foundation for what we have today. So, with all of that said, would I recommend the movie? Yes, I would. Despite its issues, and there are several, this movie is still very entertaining. For those of you who love Easter eggs, there are certainly plenty of those, as well as many unexpected cameos that are fun. And, if nothing else, seeing Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds together is a real treat, and is something I think we can all agree should have happened much, much sooner. 